Welcome, everyone. I am so stoked about today's guest. She ranks in some of my favorite people in the history of the world and in my life. This is my Aunt Jill, Jill Neistel, um, blogger, author, influencer, incredible writer, great mother. Just, do you want me to keep going? Oh, God, keep going. I, yeah, I can keep that's going. Nice. So, um, <laughs> and former business partner and uh, always a partner at heart. So Jill is an incredible story. We're gonna talk about it today. I had the chance to work with her, what? Was it three or four years? Three, four? I think it was four. Four years. Yeah. Yeah, four years. Um, and it has been, it has played the biggest role for me in where I'm at professionally uh, and in the current state of the company here at Gig. And so this, I've been looking forward to this for a long time because she is just full of wisdom, insight, and a lot of the things that we're doing at Gig today, she played a significant role in me learning. We just were babies when we got into it. Right? Like we didn't know what we were doing, um, but we figured it out. Yeah, and we're we did. still figuring it out. Yeah, that's it's right. always changing. That's right. And she uh she's done some amazing things. Um she also you uh you wrote, were you the writer or the producer for Good Things Utah? Or I actually uh, was the producer for producer. Good Things Utah for five years. Yes. Channel 4 in Salt Lake City. So you did that five years before One Good Thing, right? Yes. Okay. Gotcha. Yes. And you won a, didn't you? I won a uh, <laughs> Emmy. I'm like, an I was going to say Oscar. I'm like, no. I won an Oscar. I won an Emmy. A yeah. regional Emmy, yes, for the best um, talk show That's so in the cool. region. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. She is a woman with many talents. Um, she, uh, babysat me many times. We actually, <laughs> many, many times. children's book. Uh, we're going to talk about that later. Um, I have a guest appearance <laughs> in does. it of her changing my diaper. It's very, <laughs> Little it's fantastic. Little redheaded Scotty. Yes. Scotty, as they called me. It's funny. Everyone calls me Scotty. Uh, we still but, call you Scotty. Yeah. All the fam family all calls family. me Scotty and any friends from my childhood back in Huntington <laughs> beach or long beach, California. So, um, yeah, a lot of great memories anyway. So, um, I want to dive into this. So, so tell me about one good thing by Jilly. Now, just one good thing. It's one of the last things I worked on with her before. Yeah, you yeah, did. Yeah, we you locked did. down onegoodthing.com. Uh, but one good thing by Jilly is where it started. How did this all start? Where did it come from? I um, obviously have a creative background. I used to be in TV news, and I've always been a writer, and I produced a talk show. So after I quit that talk show, I went through a very dark time in my life. I was kind of, for lack of a better term, in a midlife crisis. And I ended up um, dealing with my pain very poorly and using alcohol to help me get through it. And because I am a very addictive personality and kind of runs through the family. Yes, it does. <laughs> um, I went down fast. Like I just went to the rock bottom, which is a blessing and a curse. Like it was bad, but at least it didn't last that long. You yeah. know how it could have been dragged out for years. I ended up going through rehab for alcohol addiction, um, came out. And one of the things they told me was you need to find your passion or you will end up right back here where you started. And I did not want to do that. So I just kind of as a therapy for myself, because I was living one day at a time, as you know, we do when we're addicts, um, I decided to cha share one good thing a day, just once a day as kind of my therapy. And I've always loved to share and yeah. um, write. And I started it out online and then I made my own little website. <laughs> that if you go to like those Wayback Machines and you look at it, oh, it's so embarrassing. <laughs> my my Part team likes to bring that up and show me and embarrass me. So that was it. That was really how it started. And then um, it just gained momentum from there. I think it was a time in our culture where more women were, um, women will always work and always are working, but they were caring more about what's going on at home as well. So I felt like it was kind of that resurgence of making your own honey or, you know, yeah, all yeah. those things, growing your own garden. Yeah. And so it really clicked with a lot of people. That's really cool. So one of the things that I respect most about Jill is her being open about where she has fallen short in life. And she she's very open talking about addiction and, you know, alcoholism that she she suffered, you know, from for a long time. But um, I, I just I, I think that is so powerful. I mean. 
what what would you tell? I, I actually think that it played a significant role in in your success. Absolutely. And I mean, it's hard it's hard to to find common ground with certain people, especially online, unless there's something you can link to. And there's a lot of people right. that suffer from addic addiction. I would venture to say that there's everyone in this world has someone they know who's addicted to something. I think it it affects every single family, every single life in some way. So I think that was kind of the something I had in common. And then the the fact that I was willing to share it, it, it kind of shocked me that people were shocked that I was sharing it. I just don't know another way. Like I can't, I don't want to just keep secrets and stuff like that because they never stay secret. And then it's just, a you know, it's. But most people do. Yeah, Most people do. do. Why, why? So, so tell me why. I want you to pretend for a second like you're talking to someone that suffers from an addiction. What would you say to this person that that needs help and should open up about it and the power of opening up about it? What would you tell them? I would 100% tell them to find someone who they trust and open up to them about it. Even if it's just your friend who doesn't know anything about addiction or how to get you help, just becoming free from that secret that holds you down and locks you in a cage. Um, that will make all the difference in the world and then getting the help you need. And once you share with someone, you'll just find the world of possibilities opens up. The universe just says, you know what, we need to help you and, and things will come out of the woodwork. Like the fact that I, where I went for rehab was just a miracle that how we found it and it ended up being the perfect rehab for me. And I was like, no, 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 I'm not going. And then I was, you know, I was, vulnerable and said, okay, I need, I do need help. And the universe will help you if you are willing to share and open up. Yeah. It's so hard. It's, it's so, it's so hard. And it I, is, and it just destroys not only the person, but the, all the people who love them, their family, their, their family that they've, you know, created. It's just so hard on everybody. Yeah, it is. But we're all here in life to live and learn, right? Um, and we all will have something like that, whether it's addiction, you know, it can be anything. we're all going to go through something. It can be anything. So I want to speak to the other side of the decision that she made uh, to to go and get help and to open up about her struggles. Jill was a woman on fire. I I was blown away by her talents as I so so coming from my side, I'm going to tell you about what happened. I knew that my aunt was an incredible content creator. And, you know, in the business that I'm in, it's all about finding content. The mm -hmm. content creators are the the driving force. You, Many people have heard con content is king. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I'm an opportunist and, um, <laughs> and I, you know, I- In the I, best sort of way. Yeah, in the best sort of way. <laughs> um, but I, I knew that I was dealing with an individual that was absolutely determined to go and win. And, and what was so cool about her, de her determination to win was it, con it was connected to overcoming a struggle, which makes it even more powerful. Right. Right. And so, um, you know, when you have that winning recipe, uh, that's a partner that, that you want to work with. So, so what happened? I, let's ask you, Jill. So mm -hmm. you had this crazy, crazy kid that you were related to that, that approached you. What happened? I, I want to hear your side. <laughs> I'll never forget. You said, you want to come to my office and we'll talk about, you know, one good thing about Julie. I'm like, sure, that sounds good. And I have to preface this with, I am not a business. I'm not trained in business. I didn't go to school for business creation. Content creation is what I love. And that's really the only title that I will fully accept and say, I am a content creator and I'm good at it. But the business side, I wasn't. So you said, well, why don't you come over and we'll just chat about it. And then we talked about it and I realized this was the missing piece because I knew I could only go so far with what I knew, my knowledge. Um, and I, you know, I wanted to put all my effort into content. I needed someone else. And then you like took out your checkbook. <laughs> Sometimes that talks, right? And you wrote me a check. I won't say how much it was for, but I was like, really? And I knew then you wanted to be in, you wanted skin in the game and yeah. you would be a big help. And I was like, let's do this. That's how it and started. And that's how it all started. That was the beginning. <laughs> you had, I mean, I have to give him credit. You had vision because this was in the beginning of vlogging. Yeah. Like I wasn't one of the original, original vloggers, but I was 2011. Yeah. 
when I started. 12 years now. And so you Holy had vision. God. Yeah, no, I, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> and what what's really interesting um, and what makes this so special, I, I reference Jill a lot. So any any of you that are listening that, you know, are influencers or, you know, content creators, I guarantee you that I'd mentioned Jill at one point. Um, it, it's an incredible world that we live in right now, uh, especially with regard to online content creation and creators. Creators are without question the most valuable asset to any platform on the planet. And I'm glad to hear you say that. Well, it's the truth. <laughs> I just I'm just speaking the truth. And um it is, it's, it's a new age of marketing. And, uh, you know, I had, I had been doing my research and studying the importance of content creators. And this was, this was bad. I think that we officially partnered in 2013, if I'm not mistaken. Very close. It, it was, uh, a lot of things were happening, um, but, but influencers were gaining traction on these different social channels mm -hmm. and platforms. Um, and I still remember uh, reading the article about Instagram being acquired I don't even think they had made a red cent, but no, they were acquired so. for like a billion dollars by Facebook. And I, I knew that something was was happening. Um, this was also the time that Pinterest started. That's right. That's right. Where you you did pretty well. You capitalized quickly. I on, rode that wave as long as I could. Yeah. Yeah. And eventually, you know, they became like everyone else. They wanted to be paid to, be, right. to be noticed. But um, in the beginning, we rode that wave. That's right. Um, and so the one thing that that and this is more of a kind of a telling the story, but also an educational piece, especially for you influencers is Jill and I knew that, uh, the best way to, to drive dollars was to control a destination that you could drive eyes back to. So traffic is King. When you look at Facebook, you look at Twitter, you look at Instagram, you look at TikTok, you look at YouTube, they are the kingpins because they have the content. Uh, they also have we the, make for them. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> so influencers making content, when you put it on their platform, you are helping line their pockets. Mm -hmm. And that that's a good thing, but it could be a better thing if you leverage those platforms to drive eyes back to a place that you control the outcome. So so what is one when people go to onegoodthing.com right now, what are they seeing? Like what what's the experience that they're getting right now? Um, they come to our homepage and they see that we, I think we even have it at the top now, just as a line, you know, we help people live their lives better, you know, whether it's their home or their garden or their, um, clothing, you know, we just give them tips that help them to make the life that they're living, which everyone has to have a home. Everyone has to dwell somewhere. That's right. We can make it easier and better and nicer. That's right. And Jill is a brilliant writer but so creative about how she approaches her writing. And if you go to One Good Thing and you got, everyone got to go check it out. You all got to go see it because it really is one good thing that brings goodness to life every single day. So whether it's a do it yourself, something or other, a recipe, yep. a piece of advice. Yep, we you do know, advice. That's right. We do a lot of cleaning tips. We do yeah. a lot of, um, we do a lot of uses for like you take your paper clip and you look at it and you're like, I wonder what you know, I could do with this. And, we blow people's minds the things you can do right. with a paper clip. <laughs> right, right. And, and yeah, it's it just started from that and, and it just affects pretty much all aspects of a person's life, you know, that they have to run a home or be in a dwelling. That's right. And so so now let, let's go back to the discussion we were just having. Jill is putting out these amazing pieces of of goodness and helpfulness, like things to help people be better. So she tells those stories on her website. Now, if she was sharing everything on a social media page, that's great, and she's probably gonna build her following, but she's working hard to create a following and to create a loyal fan base. That fan base belongs to her. She worked for that, right? She created the content and worked her tail off to get those people following her. And so many people don't understand that, um, but, the other thing that's so cool, as I had time to spend with Jill, is you can't believe how much she's influencing the lives of others. You know, I remember a couple of meetings where she would read letters or direct messages from, you know, her loyal following folks that said, you know, you changed my life. Um, you shared a story with me about someone that gave you the longest hug of your life. <laughs> yeah, a couple of weeks ago, I was I was actually at an event supporting my daughter in law who was speaking at the event, and she works for me full time. Um, and someone just came up out of the blue and just gave, you know, just enveloped me in this 
hardest, strongest hug for the longest amount of time, almost to awkwardness. <laughs> and she's just like, I love you so much. I never met her, didn't know her from Adam. And it's not like that happens to me all the time on the street, but yeah. you know, I just, I was like, I'm so touched by that. And I get those emails all the time. You changed my life. How, how does that make you feel knowing that you have that kind of influence on people? Like that responsibility <sighs> or that, like, how does that make you feel? It, it's kind of awe inspiring, really. I mean, in on a negative level, it's like, uh, you're trusting me with all this. But over the years, me and my team have developed the ability to share ideas that we know help people. And so I'm very confident of what we have to share. And so I feel great about it. I love sharing these things that change people's lives. Yeah, that's so cool. And just for the record, Jill has reached hundreds of millions of people globally. Um, it's quite fascinating. It was so exciting for me watching, you know, how many millions of eyes were coming to the site. I remember you know? I had a counter on my website yeah. when I began. And so I could see it click anytime someone came and which is so bizarre nowadays, but it just kept clicking and clicking and clicking and clicking and clicking and going faster and faster and faster. I remember I was at my mom's one day and it hit a million. I mean, that's just collective, but this was in the very beginning. Yeah. We were just like, woo, you know, <laughs> <laughs> celebrating. And now, you know, we get a hundred thousand visitors a day Yeah. and we don't think much about it, but it's crazy. You know, it's a crazy. So what, what's been the ticket? This, this is always really interesting with like, so you want to be an influencer. So you mm -hmm. want to be a blogger. You want to put content out. It's not all peaches and cream. Um, but there are some tricks of the trade that, that can make you valuable because I, there were days when I could see Jill like, oh, I can't do this anymore. This yes. is too much. <laughs> what, what, much what so. are the, so now you're talking to a, a, an aspiring writer, um, an aspiring influencer. What what recommendations would you give him? Maybe maybe like one or two, three things. You've already said the phrase content is king. That from the very beginning, that was my motto because I came from journalism. And so I wanted to inform people. I wanted to give people valuable information, you know. And so when the big, huge social media blast came when people are just doing silly things and getting millions of views that I was so not into that. I wanted to give people stuff that will help them. And, um, but I decided oddly enough that I was going to share every day. Like that was not a thing back then and really isn't now. <laughs> um, but I wanted to share something every single day cause I was living one day at a time. So I wanted to, and that overwhelmed me at times when oh, I was yeah. just like, I don't have anything to share. <laughs> But um, honestly, I think the fact that I was um, posting that often and I was consistent. Consistency. It doesn't even matter if you do it every day, but if you're doing it every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, then people know, you know, they can count on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And these, you don't take breaks to go, you know, you, this is your job, you know, you're making, this is a business. So you have to live up to your commitments and posting regularly and keeping all the platform, you know, social media platforms updated. Yeah. Uh, without question. I, I struggle sharing on a daily basis and I'm, I'm now getting back into trying to post on a daily basis because that stuff matters. Uh, have you noticed that post, uh, you've never missed a day probably in years. You there, couldn't. <laughs> there was one day it was in the beginning. I was at a conference. Like I was speaking at a conference. I think I, think I it was remember all this. Summit. Yeah. And I missed a day like I was in at the conference and I guess I just got overwhelmed didn't really even think about you know and I got on like my social media platforms and I was just like bawling I'm like I'm so sorry I, I missed a day and I'd never done that before it was almost like slipping off the wagon you know yeah I was like oh I can't believe I did that and people were so sweet they're like give yourself a break yeah, you're at no a joke. conference you're having right? to prepare a presentation but yeah, that never happened again. <laughs> yeah, no. But you've done you've done an amazing job because I I struggle posting on a daily basis. It, it's a there's a lot of pressure there. There is there I is mean, anything on a daily basis. It's just like oh yeah, you have it in the back of your mind. I got to do that. Yeah, no doubt. So uh, now, as far as an influencer, you're speaking to an influencer again or an aspiring influencer. What where is their power in 
teaming up or collaborating with, you know, a business person or someone else? What, where is their power in that? I, I, I would love to hear your thoughts on how you go about doing that. Well, I was, um, I was kind of lucky in the beginning. I mean, we all have luck in the beginning. It yeah. helps us along. And you came into my life and, and showed me the potential, but I, and I went for it. Like I was an early adopter of that sort of thing. Most influencers and many, many nowadays, still 12 years later, they want to do it all themselves. They want to keep control over everything. They don't want to, and they think if I bring someone in, I'm going to have to share the money that I make with them. Right. Not realizing they could be making so much more right. money and it would be so much. And I, I understand that from the beginning. I, you and I clicked and I just, I got it. And I still, over the years, I'd say, I have a business partner. And people are like, really? You have a business partner? I'm like, yeah. It just, it was a win-win for both of us. So being willing to bring in someone who is a professional and knows what they're doing. From day one, you and I decided that email was going to be important. And I can't tell you how many conferences I've been to and talked to people. And they're not even, they're not even, Focused they don't on have an email them. list. Yeah, they don't. And we, from day one, I was told, you know, they're the only ones you actually own. You know, we don't own anyone, but we own that list. It's ours. No one can take it from us. It's really interesting because none of these social media platforms give you any of the emails. No. None of them. Oh, no. None of them. And and there's a reason for that. There's a reason for that. They know that that the emails and the connections to these users are what truly make them valuable. Exactly. And so going and finding emails is one of the toughest things. How do you gather emails? I mean, what what's what's the trick of the trade to go get emails in in your mind? The best way to do it for us now at this point, it's um, opt ins on the website. Yep. So we have a pop up for new people that come that comes up right when they come. Yeah, to the, the first website. time they show up, yeah. boom, there it is. Yep. And now we've actually started doing a new one, but we've done s- several different iterations over the years. Whereas once they've scrolled to near the bottom of it, it pops up like everything shades behind it and it's just, you know, highlighted. So yeah, opt-ins is definitely. So should you, so when an influencer steps into the game, they, they got to know their reasons for it. Some people do it for right. fame. Some people do it for following, but if they're there to make money, right? would you say that the number one focus should be around gathering emails? Absolutely. Yeah. Because that's, that's how over the last, I'd say three years, our organic traffic has gone down because we just, there's just so much more competition than when we started. That's crazy. Like I'm competing against Women's Day and Real Simple Magazine and Family Circle. So there's going to be, you know, less to go around. So as our organic traffic has kind of leveled off and gone down, we still have those email subscribers and they get sent every day, our post of the day, and they make up for that. Yep. So it helps in every aspect. And then on campaigns that we do with people. Yep. So what would you say, following emails, what would you say is the next best place to go or be thinking about as you move into looking to monetize your, your content? Um, ad revenue has always been our like- Bread and butter. Bread and butter, yes. Ad revenue and then sponsorship opportunities. Sponsorships. Those are the main ones. See, those are my favorite things to do. And this is one of the reasons that Jill <laughs> and I had so much fun sell. together. I mean, so so now let, let, me, let me speak- you know, as an entrepreneur side, looking at a content creator like Jill, um, when you walk into a room of a business that has a product that aligns with her target audience and you have analytics to show, it becomes easy to yeah. close deals. So the question is whether or not you can kick a door down to go and sell to the right group. And Jill, I mean, I, I will never forget the f- I think the first deal that I ever did with you, Jill, was the Blendtec deal, if I'm oh, not yeah. mistaken. Yeah, and that was ended up being a very yes. long lasting partnership. Yeah, it Wonderful. was it, for sure. And um, but what what's interesting is when you, as an entrepreneur, go in as you know a partner in the business, go in and you show analytics. That data is the closer. Right. It really it is. It, it, it is, and so. It became easy because Jill had a destination. She had a website that allowed us through Google Analytics and other analytics of our own to go in and show the value that she could potentially bring. You're not getting that as much as you think you are from a lot of the social platforms. And so there is a tremendous power in having a destination that you control and understand, right? 
And so, um, so that, that's actually, so, so ads, um, how does that all work? I mean, I know the answer. I want to hear you talk about it, but, uh, how does ads work? Like, how do you get ads on a website? I get people asked, that's probably the most asked question I get. It's Same. like, how do you make money? You know, Same. how do you put ads and you look for a good ad network that, um, represents people that do the same thing as you your target audience yep. yes and um it can it can be tricky you want to find the right fit yeah and the best deal and then they provide the ads that they know are influenced by your analytics that your viewers would like and be interested in and it's much easier than you having a sales force and sending right. everyone right. out trying to get ads for your website right um and so that makes it very simple um, I'm simplifying it in that, you know, sometimes it can get more complicated, like how many ads are you going to put on your website? You know, you don't want to annoy people, but you got to make, you know, you got to keep the lights on. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, I, they actually did a study around this, that people are not offended by ads as much as we one think would think. Yeah. yeah. I mean, everything's We've ads. We've always been so conservative. And then, you know, in the effort of growing our business and, and making more money, We've kind of loosened that up, and and we never have gotten any bad no. feedback about that. No, nope. so I, I think that's a good point and a good good piece of advice. So sponsorships, how do sponsorships work? Do people hit you up? I mean, how does that how does that work? Um, we wish that all people were just like knocking at our door. That does happen too if um, someone hears about us and and is interested. But most of the time, it's us knocking on their doors or just finding um products out there that we think will be a good fit and then just approaching them gotcha and then we can show them campaigns we've done in the past and who we worked with and we have a advertising page on our website that shows all the brand logos that we've worked with and that kind of you know impresses and sells itself so. yep so emails ads sponsorships how about branded products we have gotten into that as well like, yes in the beginning, we um, gave a lot of tips that had to do with like natural remedies because I liked essential oils. I never was in an essential oil company or I never was in, in an MLM, but I liked essential oils. So I used them. And of course, I would it would come up in the blog on the post that I did. But um, it got tricky with all of the, you know, the companies and the MLMs right. and then the new regulations. And so... We ended up going with another very small company and we, they get a commission or we get a commission when they sold. And then they kind of turned around and <laughs> bit us in the bud. They said, we'll do 25% commission. And then two weeks later, we've decided to give you 5%. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's when we said, you know what? We need to just bottle our own and make our own essential oils. And so that's what we did. And that started our shop, which slowly we've been adding more and more products that we have talked about in blog posts in the past, but now we're selling the things too. And some of that, you got a skincare line, yeah. a new skincare line. We do. We, I have always been one who likes, I want to take care of my skin. I want it to look the best it can, but I want it simple. And I want someone to tell me what to use and in what order. And so we decided um, to find something that was very simple, um, simple ingredients, natural ingredients. And we came up with four pieces of our skincare treatment. You don't have to buy all four, you know, there's a moisturizer, a serum, a um, cleanser and an oil. And it's been, it's been really popular with those who have, who are getting on in age like me, you know, T that's why it's called timeless or timeless, timeless. beauties. <laughs> timeless beauties. No, you look great. You would never know her oh. age. Yeah. It never, I'm never not, know. I'm not sharing it, but <laughs> yeah, no. No, it's... I think you can figure it out <laughs> by, by knowing that I'm <laughs> your, your, your yeah. uh, nephew. <laughs> yes. So, uh, so what is the, what is the, what's next for, for one good thing? What, what is your focus or what are you moving into? Is there anything on the horizon that you're pushing? I know the skincare line. Is there anything else that you're looking to do outside of just sharing goodness one, one time a day? There's a couple of things that we, and this business is like this. It's just like, it's not yeah. like up and down. It's more like, you know, maneuvering through all the different changes. It just is always changing. So you have to be able to change with it. Um, we've kind of gone back to the basics as far as we're working on our SEO more now because there's so much more competition for organic traffic. We want Google to like us and send us 
of traffic. We're also, with the success that we've seen in our by Jilly shop, um, we're pursuing that more because that's a whole nother revenue aspect that has kind of been, you know, a little supplemental, nice to have, but it's becoming more and more. Um, we actually, a couple of months ago, our ad revenue equaled our shop revenue. And that was pretty amazing. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. That's, that's yeah. amazing. So we're really focusing on those two things right now. Very cool. And Very we cool. always focus on email. I mean, that's always in the back of our minds. Yeah, emails are huge and crucial. How many people on the team now? I don't even know. I haven't even asked. Uh, Chris, Chris still around? Chris, Caitlin? Britta, Caitlin, Britta. Caitlin, Brittany. They're all full time. And then I have people that help from on location. I have someone in Arizona, someone in Los Angeles, someone in North Carolina. And they all, we all work together. So I think there's 10 or 11 of us right now. Gotcha. Um, very cool. That's, yeah. that's so cool. It's and, kind of amazing. When yeah, you think about it. it really, it really is. It, it, it's, it's, it's fascinating and amazing and, and so exciting. Like, and you were part of the beginning of it. it very, very big part. Yeah, no. It Not was. to mention the book deal you got me. Yes, the book deal. <laughs> yes, I actually had That was a very exciting part. Oh, oops. Here's the book. Uh, she's an author and you need to check this out. This is a great book. It is there's a great chapter in it that has a picture <laughs> of, yeah, no, there's, moi? there's, but, but this is, this is really, really cool. I mean, what, tell us, tell us about the book real quick. What, what does it talk about? Um, it talks about my journey and how I was able to start this blog and how it took off, but it also talks about where I started. You know, I, I always say I grew up, I had an idyllic upbringing, like Southern California in the sixties and seventies. I just had a wonderful I had wonderful parents, wonderful siblings, great fa extended family. And then to have something like what happened to me in my 40s was just like so out of the blue. I just, so you just could never say, you know, never, that'll never happen to me because right. it certainly did happen to me and it was devastating. Um, but I was able to come back from it. So not only did I survive, but I was able to thrive. And I honestly, and we've talked about this, I don't think, I know I wouldn't be where I am today if I hadn't gone through that. It was a r big wake up call. And it was also a big opportunity for me to do something different. I need to find my passion because I don't want to go back to where I was. And that led to one good thing. So cool. It really is such an inspiring story. Thank you. So the moral of the story is open up about your addictions. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> find a way to battle back by finding your passion. And I, I everyone have, should find their passion, whether they've been through addiction or not. You just need to find your passion because then what you do isn't work. Yes. It's just what you love and you're going to be much better at it. Yeah, it, it really is such an inspiring story. And that's I, uh, I really look to you as as such an example. Um, it's, it, it really is an inspiring story. You check the book out. You can get the whole story. And there's you, you have a great write up on your blog somewhere about you and about the whole story. Yeah, yeah there's yeah. an about me page yeah and if you want to get like teary-eyed and emotional read the comments on that page of people who've also either been through addiction themselves or know someone close to them that has and it'll just rip your heart out it's just it's so prevalent yeah it, it really is i've always said can you imagine if everyone had what they struggle with hovering above their head yeah how different would life be? So different. Yeah, like the, the struggles or things that they're going through, addiction, And I was able to hide sadness. it for a long time until I couldn't. Uh, you know, I you're right. We had no idea. I mean, Jill is as lively and happy and as excited and just fun to be around, fun loving as they come. And I remember, I remember, I remember, I don't know if it was a group text or something where grandma was asking, you know, hey, everyone keep Jill in the prayers. And we're like, Jill? What? What? <laughs> I know. It's, but- Thankfully, I, it's a blessing and a curse, but when it was noticed by my behavior, then I was able to get help. But if I'd kept it secret, there's many, many addictions that are very secret and stay very secret for a long, long time. Um, but it's that reaching out that is so important. Yeah. And if it's not you reaching out because you're just in a really dark, dark place and you can't do it, you know, let other people help let them you. In. You know there's got to be people around you who are sensing something is wrong. Let them in. What, why do in. you think people don't let them in? I'm, I'm curious to hear why. Why won't you let some... I mean, I, I know the reasons why I didn't open up about some of the stuff that I've dealt with. I mean, what do you think it is? Why um, weren't you letting people in until... Pride. 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 You just... You don't want to admit. 
I, my big hang up was that I'm a mother. I have four kids. How could a mother do something like this? I felt yeah, the devastated. Pressure. I felt like I was the worst mother in the world until I realized there were a lot other mothers in the same boat. And not only mothers, but lawyers and doctors and nurses and grandmas and cowboys and florists that I met them all in rehab. And so you don't feel so alone. Yeah. I have to say when I went into rehab, I kicked and screamed. I did not want to go. I was not going to go. And then I finally submitted. And then when it was time to graduate 78 days later on my real birthday, I was scared to death <laughs> to leave, yeah. but it was greatest blessing. Yeah, no, for real. And you are an amazing mother. Like my cousins are as cool as they come. These cousins that she gave me, uh, <laughs> and and Uncle Dave, her husband is the salt of the earth. I, I that's a good I, word for him. I might have to admit that Dave is one of my favorite uncles, if not. <laughs> my, don't tell anyone, Dave. Um, but Eric, Britta, Kel, mistake. and Stan, um, they are as awesome as they come. I got I got to see a couple. I didn't get to see Kel. Um, yeah. on Saturday he had some stuff he did. do you yes. know that Kel gave me that picture of Superman right there he right did here? he gave me this big one on the wall Kel. I did not know yeah. that you know, he's, he's the second biggest Superman fan after I know he, uh, he is he, he is <laughs> but just great kids I've I've had a chance to even work with a couple of them but I they're just the best and I think they've all turned out even better than they would have if we hadn't gone through what we had as a family that's right we all learned so much yeah they're they are awesome they are Okay, well, in winding down, I have a couple fun questions for you. Okay. Um, that I, well, first of all, I want to ask you more, this is more business related. If you, what are your favorite products to push? So if you have a chance to push a product and maybe some of the products that you pushed in the past that you've had a lot of success with, what are your favorite products to push? And you know that your audience will like, latch um, on or love it. We had um, a relationship with Blendtec was great. It was because awesome. Because you use, you can use a blender in so many different ways. Yeah. Um, we've had some relationships with cleaners, like there's one called Powerizer that mm -hmm. was an offshoot from OxyClean. And we sold a lot of that because it was just a natural fit. Um, what else? Anything home related, mm -hmm. anything that helps you and it, and something that's, um, affordable, you know, not things that are really high end. We want to be able to help as many people as possible. Yeah. Like, I'm not kidding. I'm not just saying this because she's my aunt, right? <laughs> like, if you want to learn how to clean your house brilliantly, efficiently, cost-effectively, yeah. like, it will blow your mind. She has some of these, <laughs> some of these posts have, like, gotten hundreds of millions of pins type thing. Yeah, some of her absolutely. recipes. Like, dude, you got it. You have got to check it out. So, um, so okay, next question. And this is the, the entrepreneur in me. If you could partner with five companies... Who would those companies be? Just let's just Ooh, throw nice. them out there. I want to hear who they are. Martha Stewart. Martha Stewart. Oprah. Oprah. <laughs> um, probably one of those like Wayfair or Wayfair home. furniture stuff. Ho. Um, Target yeah, home stuff. would be Target. 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 Yes. Or J C Penney. J C Penney is that J C Penney? J C Penney. Okay. Um. Any others? Uh. What about clothing? Oh yeah. Yeah. Like clothing okay. or shoes. Um, me and Bowden and Bowden. Ann Taylor and, Ann Taylor. and J. Crew. We go J. Really Crew. Well. I love J. Crew. I should really start my own line of cardigans because you know how many cardigans I have. I have like every color of the rainbow. Well, why don't you? <laughs> I think I should. No one's holding you back. <laughs> no. Nope. You get passionate about Did it. Because you got five? style. You seriously have style. You really do. You're kind to say that. You really do. She's got style. I, it's, it's a totally like made up homemade style of my own, but. It works. <laughs> How about makeup? What's your makeup company of choice? Uh, Bare Minerals. I work. Bare Minerals. I, like, um, I don't know if I've heard of Bare Minerals. There's a company called Purbell. Purbell. Uh, have you heard of that? No. Oh. <laughs> it's, a, it's what we call a CC cream. So it's a sunscreen and a color correction type thing. And I love it. And I should probably do something with them because I love it so much. Well, let's... Uh, <laughs> I, I am taking note. Just FYI. Yeah. Anything... Uh, and organization anything like home edit or yeah. the container store yeah oh love that and gardening garden any proven oh, winners if they want to come to my house and I, <laughs> help I, me plant the i have recently discovered a love for gardening does that oh, make me old no it means you come from gardening well grandma yeah. gra like her mother my grandma yeah. 
was like award winning yes. garden. She actually did win an award for a garden. She did. Like a community award. She like was on the front cover of a magazine, like of a garden. <laughs> She anyway, it's has, in our blood. It's funny to see it trickle down to the nieces and nephews now because it didn't, you know, when you were younger, obviously. But but Nate now is just another nephew. Who's yeah. Really into gardening. And to hear yeah. you, I just love it. Oh, uh, it's it's so fun. It's like your yard and is Eric's your canvas. Too. Eric's in- yeah, I know he is. Okay, now let's get into some fun questions. To get to know you a little bit better. What is the first concert you ever went to? Jackson Five. Are you serious? <laughs> Serious. That might be the coolest one I've heard. Jackson Five at Dodger Stadium. Shut up! Place. That that is officially the coolest concert for the first ever that I've I ever was, heard. I was probably around 16, 15, 16, and they were performing at Dodger Stadium. Wow! And we went, and I was actually on crutches at the time, <laughs> but I I had to go and I had to be. Wow, there. that's awesome! What's the first album you ever owned? <sighs> Probably bread. Bread. The best of bread. <laughs> best of bread. My dad loves bread. Probably was her name. Yes. Such a good one. <laughs> Classic. Okay. Um, who was your first celebrity crush? I think I asked you this once. I'm trying to remember who it was. Oh, your first celebrity crush? This, gosh, this is embarrassing. But I really loved Barry Manilow. <laughs> <laughs> Because let me let me frame this. Barry Manilow. I know. I know really oh manly, my gosh. Manly Manilow. But anyone who can sing to me like that, and he had such romantic songs oh. back in the day, I was just like, Mandy. Be still my heart. M- Memory song, Mandy. Mandy. Um, it should have been Jilly. <laughs> Mandy. So he, I went to see him in Vegas not that long ago, and I was just like, <laughs> but That's I also it. loved like the Tiger Beat ones, like Bobby Sherman, yeah, the Partridge Family. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Oh, that is so good. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. Um, who's myself too. Yeah, for sure. So, who's your favorite nephew? <laughs> oh gosh, this is taking you way too long. You are my favorite nephew in this building here today. <laughs> okay. Good answer. <laughs> Diplomatic. Good answer. How many nephews do you have? I, I probably, have, how many how many grandkids does grandma have i'm trying to and grandpa 40 30 40 holy <laughs> I should know this crap. yeah because the the three oldest had five each so that's 15 then i came in with four and then dory came in with three more so that's just grandchildren dang yeah we're a prolific group who drove you more nuts in your childhood my father kevin or my uncle cole Oh, your father, Kevin, hands down. He was special. He is. He is special. Special. And that's a very nice way of putting it. He's a pill. He's always been a pill, but we love him to death. And we we always think he's going to grow up someday. He never does. But that's what we love about him. Yeah, he 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 definitely is still. We have to take him the with maturity, a huge grain of salt all the time. <laughs> the maturity level of a 16 year old. But, but then we love him. you can't stay mad at him. Like nah. if he's done something and you're just like, oh, Kevin. Yeah, he, he's special. <laughs> he, he is. And so, you have all the best parts of him. Yeah, I, I, I try to. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he, he is awesome. He is. He's amazing. Which sister did you get along with the most in your childhood? Becky. Becky? She and I were best friends until she went to high school. And then she's like. Too cool. Yeah, too cool. Too cool for school. She how, how much older is Becky? Two. She's four years older. Than She's me. four years older. I know. You'd think we were closer. Anyway. Wait, how how much younger is Dory than you? Uh, seven. Joanne's three years, and then there's another four years. So there was a four year, then seven year split between you and. Holy cow! But we were so tight. Like we recently under all these slides from our past and it shows us dressing up as like gypsies and and dancing and. But then when she hit high school, she just like, I'm too cool for you now. And I was always just like I think trying that always to happens. be a little puppy and go, please take me where you go. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's great. Okay. So a couple more questions and then we're going to close it up. Um, you and Dave been married how long? 36 years. What is the key to a great marriage? How have you made it this far? It's that's not normal to make it this question. far these days. Um, we learned it the hard way, but communication we were the worst communicators in the world. And we both have communications backgrounds, which is so ironic, but we didn't share. He grew up in a Lutheran Norwegian home where you just didn't talk about things. And I grew up in a home that we're a lot better at we are now, but we just didn't talk about things that were, you know, uncomfortable. 
Yeah. Um, so communication. And then as we've learned over the years, it's all about expectations. So if I'm expecting, we went through um, counseling and one of the big things was like, I wanted a towel bar in my bathroom in the worst way. And I asked him over and over if he would put a towel bar and he never would. And so this came up in therapy. I'm like, you never would put a towel bar. <laughs> and he's probably like, so? He's like, is that important to you? So it's the expectations that you have. You have to, you have to either like moderate your expectations or you have to share your expectations with the person. And you're going to always, you know, clash in some ways and then you just work it out, you know, but wow, that's expectations good. are huge. You don't it's really about think about that sometimes. Yeah. That's, that's a great piece. So communication advice. and expectations would be my. Awesome. Awesome. Now my final question, I have one more simple question that I always ask at the end of every podcast, but um, what is, what is true success and to you in life? And then what advice would you give to anyone looking to become and do what you do, Jill Neistel, uh, as a, as an entrepreneur or business Ooh, owner. So what's true success? What's true success? Um, in the beginning, I would say that it was having money in the bank and just feeling comfortable and having confidence in your financial situation because, you know, in our first years of our marriage, we didn't have that a lot. It was very like yeah. paycheck to paycheck. And yeah. so having, being comfortable in, you know, not, I don't want to be flamboyantly rich. I just want to have money in the bank and know that I can go to the grocery store and buy whatever I need. Um, but also um, success is family. I mean, that is just bottom line. My kids mean more to me than anything. Dave means more to me than anything. My kids are actually what really got me sober. It was the only thing I knew uh, they would never have another mother besides me. I'm their only mother. I'm their only child. I had to get sober for them. Oh, that's cool. So family, family first for me always. And then feeling comfortable financially is just a huge one was for me. And what was the second part? Uh, what would be advice to a, a you um, know, aspiring entrepreneur? Like what, what advice would you give them? This sounds they... kind of trite, but find your passion. There's a lot of creative exercises you can do to find your passion too. Like look at your credit card statements and see what you're spending all your money on. Um, that's interesting. kind of enlightening. That's and actually interesting. Yeah, I've never heard that. Just, just um, look at your life and see the things that you love the most, that you're spending most of your time on, that you're thinking about the most, and just go for it. You know, just have and you don't have to like dive in head first quit your job and you know just i may i built my thing while i was working full-time and the minute my paycheck equaled the amount of ad revenue that i was making i quit it's awesome and i so i would just say find your passion because that's i never wanted like a nine-five job like it terrified me to have a nine-five job sitting behind a desk all day yeah oh yeah that's why i went into broadcast journalism in the first place because i'd always be out you know covering stories um, but you can find your passion in anything. And if you love it, it won't even feel like work. It's so good. Passion is everything. I, is. I'm, I get up and I'm passionate about what I work on and I'm happy for that reason. So that's right. Anyway, yes. thanks so much for being on. Oh, you're welcome. Seriously. Love you. It's been awesome. Delight. Yeah. I love you so much. Yeah. Though. It's good times. Oh, last question. I already know the answer. Oh, <laughs> I always end every podcast with a favorite cereal. This is hers. Is this yours now or is it since you were a kid? You know what? It's this is for you. Been... You can take it. Oh, really? Yes. Seriously? Oh, I love it. <laughs> I don't so know. Excited. It's just a staple of my life. When I was growing up, my mom never allowed us to have sugar, any kind of that sugar. That sounds butter. quite familiar, so mom. I grew up with Cheerios. But when Honey Nut came out, I was like, oh. They're so good. They're so good. So enjoy. But thanks again. Thank thanks for being on. Until Thank next you. time, sayonara, everyone.